Hello! In today's episode, we are taking a look at Bootstrap 4 and how to get it working on our Rails 5 application. Let's go! So what does a mobile-first responsive website look like? Let's take a look at a Bootstrap example. Now, on this example, it looks quite nice on a large display. But what happens if we change or view this website on a mobile device? Okay, it looks quite nice. It's responded to the change of size. And if you look here, the navbar is actually, it looks completely different. So how do we get this up and running on our Rails 5 application? Yeah, that's quite easy. We're going to be using the bootstrap Ruby gem. Now the example, not the example, the installation is actually quite straightforward. But before we do that, let's start a new Rails application. Rails new, we'll call it boots. Let's go into our application and run the server. Now let's open it up just to make sure everything is working. Great. Okay, so what's next? Okay, here we have to add the bootstrap gem. Now let's do that. A gem file. Just put it here. Okay. Next, we need to import Bootstrap in our application.scss file. Since we just created a new res application, the file is actually called application.css and we're going to need to rename that. Um, let's go ahead and also remove the require and require tree statements. Let's take a look at that application CSS file. So CSS file. See that? So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And import and then rename this to application.scss. Next step is to require the bootstrap JavaScripts. Now let's open up the application JS file. Put it there. Now, if you want to use the tool tips and popovers, it's dependent on the tether gem. And we'll need to add this to our gem file. There we go. Now, for tether to work, we also need to include that to our JavaScript. Application JavaScript file, easy enough. Oops. And now we need to run the bundle and restart the server. Great. Restart the server. And let's refresh our web app. Nothing will happen. First, what we need to do is let's create a static page controller. So Rails generate controller pages. 
you'll have an index action. Great. Okay. Now, what we'll do now is in our routes, we'll just add a root, which will be pages index. Now let's open up our pages controller. As you can see, there's the index action. Now let's open up our pages index HTML file. Let's just quickly change this. Welcome to my boot it's collection. Check out my boots. I have a lot of them. Now if you refresh that, there we go. Now let's take a look at the bootstrap documentation. Now, I guess to get started, let's take a look at the layouts. Now the way bootstrap works is it uses um, as container div to enable um, the responsive grid system. Let's just copy that. And let's put in our layout application. Well, save that. Let's refresh our page. So you can see that's moved that along. Now, let's say we want columns, like a sidebar, for instance. And that's quite easy. So we create a row, and in the row, there's columns. So div class row and it's based on a 12 column system. Let's get to it. Dev class row. Um, let's say we want this to have column, let's call it eight. And we want our sidebar to have a column of four. We'll just call this side class sidebar and put a he heading and my sidebar. Click on things. Okay. Let's take a look at our page. Look at that, nice. Okay, now let's take a look at Bootstrap's components. See if we can make things a little bit more prettier. Now it's got this navbar component that we want to take a look at. Let's add that. Page. It's going to go above here. It's not formatted properly. There we go. Let's refresh our page and see what happens. Very nice. Okay. Now, if we take a look at our application CSS file, what we need to do is we need to import our pages style sheet because it's not going to actually automatically load anymore. So if we look at our pages CSS file, now here we can add navbar and then do, I guess, margin, bottom, 30 pixels. Nicely done. Okay, what else do we have here? Let's look at um, button group. I want to have buttons on my sidebar. Got basic there. So 
as a nesting. Very nice. Okay, let's take a look at this. We'll copy this code. Open up our application layout file. Okay, in our sidebar, let's paste this in. So, four. Okay. Let's refresh. Nice, but we want it vertical. Now we can actually use this class to make it vertical. Let's do that. Change button group, vertical, refresh. Very nice. Now, what else can we do with Bootstrap? Let's look at alerts. Some nice alerts here that you can use. Some flash messages. There's even a dismissible one. Let's copy that and let's add that to our page. So let's just call this uh, yeah, dev class page. An alert. Let's change this. Um, enjoy your stay. I'm just gonna. Let's change this whole section. And what I'm going to do is in pages, do section. It's going to create some margins here for us. Very nice. Look at that. Well, what else can we do? Some breadcrumbs, some drop downs, some good content. Tables. Figures here. Yeah, let's add a table. Why not? Basic table. Oh, let's add this invest table. Okay. Let's call it. Boot collection. And color price. So let's go writing tab dollars. <clears throat> Work boots, it's black, it's five dollars, and let's call this um, home. Three dollars. Let's save that and take a look what it's gonna look like on our app. Very nice. So what we're going to do now is 
take a look at the columns. Now let's change this to large. Large as well. Oops. And if you refresh, you know what happens if we view this from a mobile device? Okay, as you can see, the table or this entire page has become the full length of the container and the sidebar has gone down the bottom. It's quite nice. So there you have it. So take a look at the Bootstrap website and let me know how you go. Until next time.